Do you believe in the concept of the one? That there is one person out there for you. What do they look like? What am I looking for? How will I know? Where does this desire come from? Is our longing for a one rooted in our evolutionary biology? Is it socialized into us by our culture? Three doctors from the University of California at San Francisco School of Medicine decided to study whether there is a physiological basis for this desire to find another. In other words, whether there is a scientific explanation for love. You can find scientific people who will say, we used to say not that long ago, 10 years ago, um, uh, scientifically minded people said, well, it would be pointless to study you know, the brain science of emotion because emotion's a bunch of frothy silliness, then what does science have to do with that? Um, it would just be a waste of time and beneath science. And now, you know, the, the kind of, uh, that attitude, which was very prevalent, has um, pretty much been chased out. And people think that emotional life, love, affection, sadness, loss, uh, all kinds of things, are completely legitimate subjects for serious neuroscientific uh, inquiry. In their research, Dr. Lewis and his colleagues came up with some rather revolutionary findings and theories. One of these theories can be explained in simple terms as follows. Mammals have an instinct that compels them to take care of their own, to sing and talk to each other, to be sad when they are separated, to play with each other, to care about each other's welfare. Scientists have determined that this impulse stems from a particular part of the brain which mammals have and which reptiles lack. They call it the great limbic lobe. When the mammal showed up on the planet, or evolved about a, a hundred million years ago, um, their method of reproduction was different, so they not only gave birth to live young instead of eggs, but they gave birth to live helpless, helpless young that had to be protected and cared for and nurtured or they wouldn't survive. They had to be given food, they had to be given water, they had to be given warmth. The parent had to and carefully attend to and monitor even the physiology of the young or they, or they wouldn't survive because they're so immature. And the, in order to carry out those new behavioral functions, a new part of the brain had to come into being or evolve, and that was the limbic part of the brain or the mammalian part of the brain. The limbic brain specializes in detecting and analyzing just one part of the physical world, the internal state of other mammals. Through this sense, mammals develop a capacity known as limbic resonance, a mutual exchange and internal adaptation, whereby two mammals attune to each other's inner states. Limbic resonance is what makes looking into the face of another emotionally responsive creature a multi-layered experience. My mother used to tell me when I was a little girl, when I found the one, meant for me, I would know it. You, one just knows it. It sounds like a cliche, but it's true. But the minute I saw my husband Paul, I knew he was the one for me. I just knew it. I, I fell in love with him immediately. We uh, Yeah, was I a, wasn't actually supposed to be with him. It was kind of a blind date, but 
but I didn't like who my cousin set me up with, so. I'm not too sure on that one. Um, I, I'd had a few boyfriends before I met Dennis, but I, I can remember telling a girlfriend at the time that he was the one I was going to marry before he even actually asked me. Early in life, the limbic brain develops emotional attractors. In other words, our early experience with those around us becomes encoded and affects who we then become attracted to. This bias forms an integral part of the neural systems that view the emotional world and conduct relationships. Relationships have a kind of grammar to them or a kind of internal structure or coherence and what happens between two people has a regularity in it that's discoverable. Uh, the brain of a child studies, if you will, the relationships that are going on around him or her and pulls out the regularities and learns those uh, regularities or rules just as they learn the rules of their native language. Depending on the kind of family you have that may serve you well or it may not serve you well. And if emotional interactions in the family take place that are, ex are eccentric or are um, not really valid when applied to the, the larger world, people will not be speaking the same emotional language that everybody else knows. And uh, in our practices, we see a lot of those people, they're often baffled about how relationships work, what goes on in them. They don't understand what they don't know. Often they don't know that there's something they don't know. An attractor is that um, kind of intuitively acquired, ingrained pattern um, of implicit memory. Say if you grew up in a family where when you expressed your opinion, somebody yelled at you. Um, you learn something from that. It's not just that experiencing it is unpleasant, which it is, but your brain learns actively um, about what the structure of the world is like, what you can expect from a given um, interaction, and it changes how you see the world forever. Um, and one of the um, one of the actions of attractors is not only to prepare people to act in a certain way, but they also alter incoming sensory information so that um, people don't see reality. They see sensory data that's been filtered and compressed by their attractors into much simpler things. And if your attractors are not accurate, say, you won't be seeing the real world very clearly. So this encoding of the limbic system is malleable. It can change and adapt by constant interaction with the compatible limbic system of another. In a relationship, therefore, one mind revises the other. One heart changes its partner. This incredible phenomena is known as limbic revision. Our attractors activate certain limbic pathways and the brain's memory mechanism reinforces them, giving us the power to remodel the emotional parts of the people we love.